as against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for then the kingdom, the power, and the glory shall be me. Let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God. The Father of our Lord, God and Savior Jesus Christ, free us, covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him, the Lord our God, the Pantocrator, to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Therefore, we ask and entreat your goodness, O lover of mankind, grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in all peace of your fear, all envy, all temptation, all the work of Satan, the counsel of wicked men and the rising up of enemies, hidden and manifest, take them away from us and from all your people and from this your holy place. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for it is you have given us the authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind, of your only begotten Son, our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom the glory, the honor, the dominion, and the worship are due unto you, with him and the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who is of one essence with you, now and at all times, and unto the age of all ages. Amen. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your great mercy. And according to the multitude of your compassions, blot out my iniquity. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my iniquity, and my sin is at all times before me. Against you only I have sinned and done evil before you, that you might be just in your sayings, and light overcome when you are judged. For behold, I have conceived in iniquities, and in sins my mother conceived me. For behold, you have loved the truth. You have manifested to me the hidden and unrevealed things of your wisdom. You shall sprinkle me with your hyssop, and I shall be purified. You shall wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. You shall make me to hear gladness and joy. The humble bones shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in my inward parts. Do not cast me away from your face and do not remove your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a directing spirit. Then I shall teach the transgressors your ways and the ungodly men shall turn to you. Deliver me from blood, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. O Lord, you shall open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. For if you desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and humbled heart God shall not despise. Do good, O Lord, your good pleasure to Zion, and let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you shall be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, offering and burnt sacrifices. Then they shall offer calves upon your altar. Sajnálom, és sajnálom, amin a lélekén a fráni műtjöttén a psíri nem tudna már tovább, onatról, amin visszabb a trikai, oké, a gondomat, kénikai, készosan szóna, amin prayer and praises of the twelfth hour of this blessed day. I offer to Christ my God and my King, teaching him to forgive my sins from Psalms of Father David the Prophet. May His blessings be with us all. Amen.
and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hail to you, we ask you, O saint, full of glory. The ever-virgin, the Theotokos, the mother of Christ, lift up our prayers unto your beloved Son, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to the Holy Virgin, who has brought forth unto us the true light, Christ our God. Ask the Lord for our behalf, that he may have mercy on our souls and forgive us our sins. O Virgin Mary, the Holy Theodokos, the faithful advocate for all mankind, intercede on our behalf before Christ whom you bore, that he may forgive us our sins. Hail to you, O Virgin, that Christ and to peace. Hail to the Christ of our race, who bore to us in the mother of the true light. We glorify you, O Saint Theotokos. Glory be to you, our Master, our King, Christ, the proud of the apostles, the crown of the martyrs, the joy of the righteous, the firmness of the churches, the forgiveness of sins. We proclaim the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. We worship him, we glorify him. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. We believe in one God. God the Father, the Pontus Rasor, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of innocence of the Father, by whom all things are made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures, ascended into the heavens. He sits at the right hand of his Father, and he is coming again in his glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. He has to believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we confess one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the light of the age to come. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. I mean, Kiria Lai Song, 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 Kiria Lai Song. Kiria lai son, 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 Kiria lai son. Holy, holy, holy Lord of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of your glory and honor. Have mercy on us, O God, the Father, the Pantocrator. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord God of hosts, be with us. For we have no helper in our hardships and tribulations but you. Absolve, forgive, and remit, O God, our transgressions, those which we have committed willingly and those which we have committed unwillingly, those which we have committed knowingly and those which we have committed unknowingly. The hidden and manifest, O Lord, forgive us for the sake of your holy name, which is called upon us. 
Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, all our sins which we committed against you in this day, whether in deeds or in words or in thoughts or through all senses, please remit and forgive us for the sake of your holy name, as you are good and lover of mankind. God, grant us a peaceful night and a sleep free from all anxiety, and send us an angel of peace to protect us from every evil and every affliction and every temptation of the enemy. Through the grace, compassion, and love of mankind of your only begotten Son, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom is due with you and with the Holy Spirit, the life giver, who is of one essence with you, all glory, honor, and dominion, now and forever and unto the ages of all ages. Amen. Oh, have mercy upon us, O oh God, and have mercy on us. Who at all times and every hour in heaven and on earth is worshiped and glorified. Christ our God, the good, the long-suffering, the abundant in mercy, and the great in compassion, who loves the righteous and has mercy on the sinners, of whom I am chief, who does not wish the death of the sinner, but rather that he returns and lives, who calls all to salvation for the promise of the good things to come. Lord, receive from us our prayers in this hour and in every hour. Ease our life and guide us to fulfill your commandments. Sanctify our spirits, cleanse our bodies, conduct our thoughts, Purify our intentions, heal our diseases, forgive our sins, deliver us from every evil grief and distress of heart, surround us by your holy angels, that by their camp we may be guarded and guided, and attain the unity of faith and the knowledge of your imperceptible and infinite glory. For you are blessed forever. Amen. Finally, O Lord, hear us through the intercession of Saint Mary, Mother of God, Son Mark the Evangelist, and all the saints have peace since the beginning. Hear us, O Lord, when we pray thankfully, our Father who Lord art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God bless.
Beta on your phones. So search for the song uh, Hail to Mary, Mother of God. Hail to Mary. You can find it under uh, SanTecla.org.
the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, as you know now, we are passing the fast of Saint Mary, uh, the Mother of God. Uh, and when Archangel Gabriel appeared to Saint Mary, she was almost uh, 14 years old. So she is either similar to our age or even younger to the age of many of us. But in spite of this, in spite of her young age, she reached a very high level of spirituality to the extent that, as we say in the Theotokia of Wednesday, the Father looked from heaven and found no one like you. He sent his only begotten Son, who came and took flesh from you. He found no one like you, like Saint Mary. So, we wonder, how Saint Mary, in this very young age, was able to reach this very high level of spirituality. Especially we as youth, many times we struggle. We struggle with many desires of the flesh. We desire with our identity. We desire how to fit in the culture. We desire about, uh, we, we struggle about our careers, we have many, many struggles. So how St. Mary, in her very young age, 14 years old, she was the best in the whole world. The best in the whole world. I like to speak about four virtues in the life of St. Mary that helped her to reach this level. Or maybe I will call them four spiritual principles. She lived by them, and because she lived by these principles, she was able to reach this very high level. But before I, I, I mention these four principles, I like to speak about her upbringing, because also her upbringing contributed to her high spirituality. Saint Mary came from a very godly family. Her parents, Joachim and Anna, were very, very godly people. Joachim was a descendant of Judah. And Anna was a descendant of Aaron. So actually, in St. Mary, the two important tribes, the tribe of priesthood, Aaron, and the tribe of Levi, and the tribe of royalty, Judah. So she came from these very, very big, blessed two tribes, Judah and Levi. And her parents were very godly and they presented her to the temple at age of three. But before they presented her to the temple, they raised her in the fear of God. Even in the very uh, uh, few years, in the first three years of her life, they raised, raised her in the fear of God and they nurtured her with all the teachings of the scripture and all the godly principles and godly virtues. Then at age of three, they presented her to the temple. And she lived there. She lived among the Levites and among the priests. All what she was hearing is the word of God, praising God, spiritual chants, spiritual songs. 
and she was serving in the in the temple. So she learned the life of service and to give herself to serve others from very young age, from age of three. As it's written about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve. Her, his mother, Saint Mary, was also uh, full of this spirit of service. And it appeared later on when she heard from Archangel Gabriel that Elizabeth, this old lady, is pregnant. She went to stay in the mountains of Judah to serve Elizabeth. It was her nature to serve others and to help others. And the Holy Tradition tells us about St. Mary that she used to distribute her food to the poor. So this spirit of giving, not only giving in service, but giving all what she had. And she trusted God that he will take care of her. And the Holy Tradition tells us that God sent angels with food to St. Mary after she distributed all what she had. She lived in poverty. She didn't have any money, but she trusted God. So her life in the temple from age of three to the age of 14 helped her also to reach this very high level of spirituality. And her parents died when she was very young. Her father died at the age of six, and her mother died at age of nine. So she became orphan uh, in a very, very young age. But she learned how to trust God in her life. And at age of 14, when she cannot stay any longer uh, in, in the temple, and when they decided to see a man to be entrusted to take care of her, and they collected uh, sticks from many godly men, and they said, we'll put all these sticks in front of God. And the one that will blossom, like Aaron's rod, then this is the man that God had chose him to take care of St. Mary. I'm sure the priest saw in Mary something different. That's why, you know, they were careful to whom she would be entrusted. That's why they want God to choose. And the rod or, or the staff of, of St. Joseph blossomed. So they knew that he is the man that God chose him to take care of St. Mary. And she went and lived with him, and then Archangel Gabriel came to know him. So all this upbringing, these 14 years in the temple, in life of prayer, meditation, reflection, serving, trusting God, helped in building her spiritual life. So what did she learn in these 14 years? What did she learn in these 14 years? These are the four principles that I like to speak with you about. The first principle is she was filled with the grace of God. She knew the importance of the grace of God to her life. She knew that she cannot do anything without the grace of God. So she lived trusting the grace of God. The second is the life of meditation. Life of meditation and reflection. The third principle is the life of humbleness. Humbleness. And the fourth principle is the life of submission and 
was in the God will help me. So these are the four principles, principles by which Saint Mary lived her first 14 years. And that's why when the father looked from heaven, he did not find anyone similar to Saint Mary. That's why he sent his only begotten son who came and took flesh from her. So let me reflect a little bit about these four principles. The first principle is grace. Grace. Uh, in the Coptic uh, gospel, the translation, the Coptic translation, uh, when Archangel uh, appeared to her, he told her, Hail to you, who full of grace, charity is many more, full of grace. Grace in, in Greek, charis. Full of grace. What is the grace? What's the grace of God? The grace of God is a free gift that God gives to us. Free gift God gives to us. Not based on our worthiness, but based on his love and his abundant mercy. And this grace is available to everyone. Basically, this grace is the work of the Holy Spirit in us. So, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are filled with the grace of God. And in order to be successful in our life, there are two elements. A human element and a divine element. The human element is what you can do. And the divine element is what you can not do. When actually we are filled with the grace of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, then the divine element will work with us as long as we do our part, the human element. And there are many examples in the scripture about the divine element and the human element. God said to Peter, cast your net for a catch. But Peter told him, upon or trusting your word, I will cast my net. So trusting the word of God or upon his word, that is a grace. But he actually has to do his part. He labored all night, and they were casting their nets all night, but they couldn't catch anything. But once they relied on the grace of God, they were able to catch many, many fish. In feeding the multitude, the human element is to give what you have the five loaves and two fish. But the divine element is to feed 5,000 families from these five uh, loaves and two fish. If you did not provide what you have, the human element, the grace will not work. So God actually took the little they had, blessed it, and made it able to feed the multitude. Another example, and many, many examples, but just to, to, to get the idea. Raising Lazarus. What they can do is to remove the stone. What they cannot do is to raise the dead man. So he told him, remove the stone. We may wonder, God, if, you, if you're going to raise him, can't you, with one word, to remove the stone? Yes, he can. 
But God doesn't want our, his children to be lazy or to be irresponsible. That's why if you remove the stone, then I will do what you cannot do. I will raise the dead man. So, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will sanctify us, will consecrate us to be temple of God, then we will be successful not only in our spiritual life, but in every aspect in our life. As we read in the Old Testament about Joseph, God was with him and he was prosperous in everything he did because God was with him. In the New Testament, in the New Covenant, actually we have access to the grace of God. As St. Paul said, don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit abides in you? So we already have the Holy Spirit after we were baptized and were anointed with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Oil Mayroon, we have the Holy Spirit in us. But many times we quench the Spirit or we grieve the Spirit. That's why the grace of God is not fully active in our life. Saint Mary on the other side, since her childhood, she opened her heart to the work of the Holy Spirit. That's why she was full of grace. Full of grace means the Holy Spirit actually filled and blessed every little thing in her life. Full of grace. Full of grace. Uh, I'm sure you hear this word or this term, means of grace. Means of grace. Means of grace is the means by which actually I can be filled with the grace of God. So what are the means of grace? All of you, you know it. Prayer, scripture, liturgy, fasting, all these are the means of grace. Are you filled with the means of grace? Do you use them in your life or not? If you don't have these spiritual exercises in your life, then how you will be filled with the grace? It will be impossible. Think about St. Mary, what she was doing in the, in the temple. Either she was praying, meditating, reading or hearing the scripture or serving the uh, ceremonies, serving the sacrifices in a way or another, helping in cleaning, helping in uh, preparing. Uh, you know, we, 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 of course, she was not a, a, a Levite or, uh, or a priest, but she was helping and attending the liturgical uh, prayers. Although there are many, many means of grace, but I want to focus on three things that are very important if you want to be filled with the grace of God. Prayer, scripture, and Eucharistia, liturgy, divine, uh, divine liturgy. If you want to be filled with grace, you need to pray a lot. You need to read the scripture a lot. You need to attend liturgy as much as you can. When actually you practice these three things, besides other things, of course, like fasting, like tithing, like serving, but I just, I wanna focus on this, on these three, in the means of grace. Then you will be filled 
with the grace of God. Prayer, the, the church father, they likened prayer with the umbilical cord. Umbilical cord connect the embryo with the mother. And he receives, the embryo receives all the nourishment through the umbilical cord. So actually, if this umbilical cord is twisted or obstructed, the, the, the child can die, the, the, the baby, the, the embryo can die. In the same way, what is the connection between me and God is the prayer. It's like the umbilical cord, the prayer. If this is cut, did not exist, then I will die spiritually. I will die spiritually. The work of the, the, the grace of God is poured in our heart through the prayer. Through the prayer. You need to spend the time in prayer. And instead when you open your eyes in the morning on your phone and just check your text message or emails or the social media, no, open your eyes on the word of God and prayer. First thing in, in, in your day should be prayer. Stand before God and pray. Before you sleep, last thing, last activity should also be prayer. And if you can also pray a third time in the middle of the day, this also will be okay. And when you grow in the life of prayer, maybe one day you can pray the seven hours of the Akbe. But you need actually to pray frequently if you want to be full or filled with the grace of God. Think about again the grace of the, the prayer like the umbilical cord. If it is cut, if it did not exist, then the embryo will die. If there is no prayer in our life, we are dead spiritually. The second is a scripture, the word of God. As the Lord said to Satan, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. So if I don't read the scripture, I am hungry because I am fed by the scripture. Man will not live by bread alone, but by. So it is food for me, the word of God. And if I am hungry and I did not feed myself, eventually I will die. So as the bread is important for our body, the word of God is important to our soul. And as without food, our body will get weak first and then eventually we will die in starvation. If we are starved from the word of God, eventually we will uh, die spiritually. David in the psalm said, I found your word and I eat it. And your word was like honey in my mouth. Your word was like honey in my mouth. So it's very, very important to feed yourself on the word of God. I want you to be honest with yourself. How many hours every day you spend in games, you spend on social media, you spent on the phone, you spent watching 
uh, sports or watching movies or whatever. And how many minutes you spend with the Word of God? Why? That's our nourishment. How you will be filled with the grace without the Word of God? And the third one is the Eucharist. Eucharist. He who eats my body and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. We need actually, when there is opportunity to attend a liturgy, we need to come and participate and to partake of his body and his blood worthily. In, in, in partaking of his body and blood, he will abide in me and I in him. He who eats my body and drinks my blood abide in me. So if Christ abides in me, then I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Then I am filled with the grace. Then everything actually I do, I'll be successful in it, in spiritual life and in other aspects of my life. So the first element in the life of St. Mary how she reaches this very, very high level in spirituality in a young age, at age 14, because she lived and was filled with the grace of God. That's why, truly, she was full of grace. She was full of grace. And when Archangel Gabriel told her, hail to you, O full of grace, he just explained, described her condition. She was full of grace. The second element in her life is the life of meditation. She did not live with God a superficial in a superficial way. Sometimes our relationship with God is very, very superficial. Yes, we pray, like now we prayed the 12th hour from the Agbeya, but maybe we just uttered these words by our mouth. But my heart did not reflect on the prayer, and the prayer did not leave any impression on my heart. Maybe you attended the liturgy this morning, but we just were distracted. We don't have a deep life, reflection, meditation on my relationship with God. Uh, maybe I read the scripture, but when I read the scripture, just I read it like I read any book, and that's it. St. Mary was in the habit to reflect and to have her meditation and her quiet time with God. Even after she gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ, we read in Luke chapter 2, verse 51, his mother kept all these things in her heart. She was reflecting in all these things in her heart. Uh, the life of meditation and the quiet time makes our relationship with God deep, not just a superficial. Many times our relationship with God is like a monologue. We speak, but we don't have time to listen to God. Samuel the prophet, one of the beautiful verses that he said, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Do you have time to silence your heart, to silence your tongue, to silence your senses, 
so you can listen to God. I am sure all of us, we have this internal dialogue. Even when we are not speaking, our mind think about hundreds or thousands of things. Can you silence this internal dialogue to be able to listen to God? It needs practice. It needs to learn how to quiet and to silence your tongue, your heart, your thoughts, so God uh, speaks. David the psalmist said, I hear what the Lord God have said. I hear what the Lord God is saying. I hear him. إني أسمع ما يتكلم به الرب الإله في مزمور رديت يا رب على الأرض. I hear what God is speaking. God wants actually to get into a dialogue with him. He said, let us talk, says, says the Lord. Let us talk, let us dialogue together. You cannot have this dialogue without learning the life of meditation, reflection, thinking deep. After you read the scripture, sit with yourself and say, what the message that God want to send to me? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. After you confess, after confession, spend some time in quiet time. Listen to the voice of God. After liturgy, don't just after liturgy go to social hour with the people. Just try to spend some time in quietness with God. St. Macarius said to his disciples, after liturgy, you need to run away. So they told him, we are in the wilderness. Run away from what? We are here in the desert. So he pointed to his mouth and said, run away from this. Run away from this. I remember uh, in, in, in while I was in your age, my father of confession used to instruct me that after the liturgy, I go directly to home, go to my room, and spend 15, 30 minutes just reflecting and praying. Now I received a treasure by taking communion. I need to reflect on this. I need to meditate on this treasure that I received today in, 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 in my connection with God. St. Mary was like a child in the temple by herself. So can you imagine all this time how she spent? When I do visitation these days and when I, I ask the youth how was it like uh, stay home. 99% I hear boring. Maybe because they don't know how to meditate and reflect and benefit from this quietness. Actually, if you think about it, it's time to know how to connect internally and deeply on a deep level with God. We have a lot of many, many distractions in our life. Many distractions. Can just we stay away from these distractions? Can you stay one day without your phone? Just one day? Completely? What if I tell you one week or ten days? I hear one of the severest punishment if a parent said to their children, we'll take your phone away. Why it's a severe punishment? Actually, it, it, it should be a blessing. I wish somebody takes my phone away from me. It will be a blessing, not a punishment. But now actually, we are live in this distraction. 
uh, I, I think if there's no distraction around us, we don't know how to connect with ourselves. And if I don't know how to connect with myself, I cannot connect with God. Learn how to have quiet time to stay away from all distractions. The prodigal son, when he returned to himself, means he stayed away from the distraction of friends, partying, all these activities. He was able to make the right decision and return back to his father's house. The third uh, element in the life of St. Mary was her humbleness, her humbleness. When uh, Archangel Gabriel announced to her, uh, announced to her the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, she answered and said, Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Behold the maid servant of the Lord. Many people, uh, they refuse to, to call themselves servants of the Lord. They say, you are his children. Yes, you are his children. But read most of the apostles of St. Paul, book of Revelation, how all these apostles described themselves. They said, one servant of the Lord. Yes, you are his children. But we should not forget who are the bond servant. And uh, some people actually, uh, they even refuse to call themselves uh, children, but they say you are just brothers, like equal to, to brother Jesus, in their arrogance and in their pride. But Saint Mary, she was very, very humble. She said to Archangel Gabriel, I am a servant of the Lord. Let him do with me what he sees right. That's why when she visited Elizabeth, she said in her uh, prayers, uh, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maid servant. And in verse 52, Luke 152, he has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. Uh, one time, uh, San Macarius was walking in the desert and he saw the traps of the devil. So he sighed and said, Oh Lord, who can be saved from all these traps? And he heard a voice, the humble. Those who are humble will be saved. Uh, while speaking how to be filled with the grace, St. Peter said, God resists the proud but he gave grace to the humble. So humble before the hand of God and he will lift you up. Humble yourself before the Lord. Humble yourself before your, your brothers and sisters. You know what is the way to true greatness? If you want to be the first, be the last of all. If you want to be the greatest, be the servant of all. Service is the daughter of humbleness. That's why, as I told you, Saint Mary lived her life in the temple serving, serving without complaining. Then even after she left the temple, when she heard about Elizabeth, she went and served. And she was doing this joyfully and happily. 
in the wedding at, at Cana of Galilee, when she saw the people, they don't have wine. Her heart, who is full of love, she wants to serve these people. That's why she went to her son and told him they don't have wine. A heart full of compassion and love to serve others. Love to serve others. When we are humble and we consider ourselves the least of all and the last of all, then actually God will lift us up. Uh, but here just I want to differentiate between humbleness and low self-esteem. Because Christianity is not about to have low self-esteem. Christianity is about to be humble. And the difference here is the presence of the grace of God. A humble person will say, I am nothing. I am the least of all. I am the last of all, but I can do all things in Jesus Christ who strengthens me. So I know that I am nothing. I am, as St. Paul said, I am the first among the sinners. I am the first among the sinners. But I know also that God, who is rich in his mercy and abundant in his love, has saved me and rescued me. And in him I can do all things successfully. But low self-esteem, just I feel that I am the least, I am the last of all, I'm inferior to all, period. The element of grace doesn't exist in my life or in my understanding or in my perception. St. Mary was a true, humble person. A true, humble person. Many times uh, I thought if uh, God had chose a prideful person to be his mother, definitely she would have caused him many, many troubles, and many problems. She would argue about everything and make a problem about everything. For example, when Joseph said to Mary, the archangel appeared to me and we need to go to Egypt. If St. Mary was not humble, she would have told him, why appear to you? I am his mother. You are not his biological father. I, I don't believe you. No, I'm not going, going with you to Egypt. And she want her will to be done. But she was obedient. When they returned back from Egypt, he told her, I had another dream. Tell him about your dream. You know, the archangel told us that you should live in Nazareth. Don't live in, uh, in Judea, in Bethlehem. Again, she would have argued with him, no, why? I, I, I'm going to live in Bethlehem. Uh, the archangel did not appear to me. Why appeared to you? In the Annunciation, he appeared to me. I don't believe you. We see these arguments every day in families between couples, between parents and children. You know why? Because we are not humble, because we are arrogant. And each one of us wants his will or her will to be done. But Saint Mary was a true humble person. That's why the grace of God worked in her and she became full of grace at the age of 14. The last point and the fourth element in her life, her life of submission and trust in God. We have many worries in our life. You know why we worry a lot? Because our faith and trust in God is weak. But St. Mary trusted God. 
That's why if you reflect on her life, she hardly, she hardly make a decision or a choice in her life. She hardly. She trusted that God will make all choices for her. And she accepted all these choices gladly. She did not choose to be presented to the temple at the age of three. She did not choose to get married or betrothed to Saint Joseph. They chose him for her. Uh, you know, any girl today, she, she will say, no, it's my choice, my decision uh, to choose with whom I'm going to spend the rest of my life. Actually, she had one choice to live in virginity. And uh, she never imagined that she'll be a mother. But Archangel Gabriel announced to her that she will be the mother of God. She accepted it. And she said, behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Yes, we know that this pregnancy and this labor did not lose her virginity. Her virginity is sealed before, during, and after the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in the perpetual virgin of St. Mary. But now she is a mother. Also, she did not choose to go to Egypt, but she obeyed. She did not choose to live in Nazareth, but she obeyed. So, all her life, she trusted God and was to, in total submission to the will of God. In total submission. Even on the cross, she did not choose with whom she will live the rest of her life. The Lord Jesus Christ on the cross told her, uh, John is going to be your son, and John, she is your mother. She, she didn't tell him, didn't I have the right to choose with him with whom I will spend the rest of my life? Why did not ask my opinion? Why did not tell me what I want? But St. Mary lived <coughs> by these words that she said to Archangel Gabriel. Let it be to me according to your word. Let it be to me according to your word. Who among us can live by this word? Let it be to me according to your word. Yes, we say it in Lord's Prayer, thy will be done. But when we apply it in our life, it's a different story. Uh, one of the actually instant in her life her delivery, uh, no house, no hospital, no inn, not even a simple room in a motel, nothing. She gave birth to her son in a stable among the animals. But she trusted God. Let it be to me according to your word. Uh, so she lived her life in complete submission. Maybe she is the only one in the whole history of humanity who gave birth in a place like this. Uh, I, I cannot imagine that any other mother gave birth to a place like this. But she accepted it. She accepted it joyfully in total submission. Uh, Simon, uh, or Simeon the Elder, when he met her uh, after 40 days, uh, he told her, uh, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. She 
any, any one of us, when we go through a difficult time or painful time, we ask, why me, Lord? Why me? But St. Mary did not ask, why me? She accepted the sword. She accepted the cross in her life. Uh, joyfully. Uh, she did not question the will of God. If God allowed me to suffer, uh, then let it be to me according to your word. And in the Agbaya, in the ninth hour, actually, we read about uh, her suffering. We, we say, when the mother saw the lamb and shepherd, the savior of the world that hung on the cross, she said while weeping, the world rejoices in receiving salvation. While my, my heart burns as I look at your crucifixion, which you are enduring for the sake of all, my son and my God. A life of submission, very, very amazing, very impressive, how she lived this life of uh, submission uh, to, uh, to, to, to God. Uh, that's why she trusted God with her life. And because she trusted God fully with her life, she received an honor and glory no one has ever received it. She is exalted above the cherubim and the seraphim. No one actually is exalted above the cherubim and seraphim. You know, St. Mary uh, didn't have to fulfill the requirement of purification, the 40 days of purification, according to the law of Moses, uh, because she is the mother of God. But in spite of this, she submitted to the 40 days. And after the 40 days were over, she went to offer, actually, the sacrifices according to the law. While many females nowadays are arguing and trying to push to actually uh, cancel and challenge this commandment from the scripture, we see St. Mary in her humbleness. Although she did not need this purification, but she submit to the word of God and the law of God without any argument, but in true humbleness and true humbleness. Her life was very, very impressive. That's why we don't wonder why God chose her, why God looked from heaven and did not find anyone like St. Mary, because her relying on the grace of God, because of her deep connection with God and life of meditation, because of her, her humbleness, and because of her submission. These four elements made her in, in, indeed to be chosen to be the mother of God. And as I, I said before, yes, we honor Saint Mary because she is the mother of God, but her holy life and her godly life preceded choosing her to be the mother of God. So St. Mary was not just a regular person and God chose her. No, she was a very, very unique person. Very unique person. No one was like her. The Father looked from heaven and did not find anyone like you. He sent his son. He came and saved us. That's why Archangel Gabriel called her, help you full of grace. Who are her children? So let's ask her to intercede on our behalf. That as she lived her life, relying on the grace of God, in deep connection with God, in humbleness and in total submission, that we may follow her footsteps in order to be filled with the grace and we glorify God in everything we do. Glory be to God forever and ever.
Amen. If you have any questions or comments, I think we can have a few minutes. Yes. Right, so I have two things to ask. Uh, first thing is, uh, did Saint Mary ever sin? Like, did she ever love? Like, did she ever make sins? Like, as okay. Uh, in the Catholic tradition, the Catholic believes that she was born without the original sin, and she did not commit any sin in her life. The Eastern Orthodox they believe that Saint Mary was born with the original sin, but she did not commit any sin in her life. So I remember I asked His Holiness Pope Shenouda the same question that you are asking me right now. So His Holiness Pope Shenouda told to me that the scripture says no one is without sin, uh, even if his life on earth be a single day. And St. Paul said in Romans, uh, that in Romans chapter 3, which is a quote from the book of Psalms, uh, they have all turned it aside, they have together become unprofitable, there is none who does good, no, not one. So, no, not one, that's inclusive. It did not exclude anybody. So the, the perfect answer to your question, which I heard it from his Holy Pope Shenouda, we are not aware of any sin that St. Mary committed. We don't know. But according to the scripture, uh, no one actually, they have all turned aside and they have together became unprofitable. There is none who does good no, not one. Because the absolute infallibility is for God only. So if we say St. Mary never, never committed any sin, as if we are making her equal to God, and that's impossible. The absolute infallibility is for God. But we are not aware from the scripture or from the holy tradition of anything that she committed in her life. Any other questions? Okay. So the second thing is, um, I, 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 like, I thought only boys are, I thought only boys are allowed to stay in the temple. Like this is concerning Saint Mary going to the temple when she was three years old. Uh, she was not staying inside the holy or the holy of the holies. You know, uh, the, the 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 temple has, it's a big place and has courts around it. So she was serving there, you know? And actually there is a court for women in, in the temple. So she was staying there and serving there, but she was not serving as Levite, which is similar to deacons or as a priest uh, in the old covenant. But in the, uh, and if you study the temple, there's court for the Gentiles, there's court for the women. So she was staying where it is allowed, but she was not she did not enter the holy or the holy of the holies. Yes, in, uh, uh, Jewish uh, law, not culture, Jewish law, the, the law that was given to Moses. Any other comments?
You know, did St. Mary ask a question to Archangel Gabriel? She did. But when she asked a question, she was asking for more understanding. She asking as a humble person, not to challenge or not from arrogant perspective. The Lord Jesus Christ himself went most 12, and he sat among, among the elders. He asked them question. So, uh, yes, we, we are humble, and we accept the will of God, and we trust him. But if we ask a question also that come from a humble spirit, God would not be offended by this. Uh, actually, the, the, uh, the more I am humble and the more I don't understand, maybe the more I will have question. But the question comes from a true heart that's seeking uh, to learn and to grow. But if I'm asking uh, because just I want to challenge or I want to argue or I want to push my point, you know, this is not a, a question asked by humble people. That's why we see in the scripture the people asked the Lord Jesus Christ question lying in wait to catch him for something he might say wrong. This was not a humble when they told him, for example, should we give uh, taxes to Caesar or not? So this question is not for understanding. They want to catch him, uh, you know, something he said. So how to keep the balance between being humble and accepting and if I have question or if I have a desire for something, humbleness is internal feeling. It's not acting outside. Maybe I act from outside as a humble person, but from inside I am not. That's why humbleness is internal feeling, that I am indeed nothing. I am nothing. I am the last of all. I am the least of all. I'm the first among the sinners. But in the same time, I acknowledge the grace of God and the love of God that's working with me. And I can say with St. Paul, I can do all things in Jesus Christ who strengthens me. I think I'm coming, I'm coming from a point where sometimes growing up, we have heard things, and I think the church has gotten a lot better about this, but sometimes when we grow up, we hear, Yanni, this, this is just how it is, you know, uh, just accept it humbly, right? And I know that that's different than what Niestuk is speaking about, but. But the Lord Jesus Christ used the same answer when he said to Peter, uh, you don't understand what I'm doing right now, but you will understand, you will understand later. So there are certain things, actually, uh, we need just to accept it. So when the church sometimes tells me just accept it in a spirit of humbleness, yes, God, that's exactly what God said to, to Peter. Do you want to tell me that St. Mary, one archangel, she asked him how this can be to me and I don't know uh, man. So he told her the Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the... Uh, of the Father will overshadow you, and the one who is to be born of you will be called the, the Holy One, the Son of God. So do you think this answer, except then to St. Mary, uh, how, how the pregnancy will happen? Uh, I, I, I am sure, Yani, although she did not have a clear explanation how a virgin will be pregnant, but she trusted in, in, in a way or another. So many times, actually, we don't understand because God, as we say in St. Gregory liturgy, incomprehensible. So we don't understand. And here it's time of faith just to accept. Give me what you have, five loaves and two fish. <laughs> Andrew told him, you know, we need at least to buy bread only, bread for 200 denarii just to feed these people bread. So, but the Lord told them, give me what you have. They gave it to him, trusting him. So there is time in which actually, even if I don't understand, or my question is not answered, I need to come in humbleness and trust 
you know, and just listen to his word. Any more comments or questions? Yes, hand fil akhir. Just one second. They will give you the microphone. Uh, did the Saint Mary's fully trust that Jesus Christ is going to be risen after the death or not? I and mean, what she did after the Jesus like risen to the heaven? So she's like served as a disciple serving or just like sitting home or what she did after Jesus like went to heaven so you are asking what she did after the Lord ascended to heaven yeah and the first question is like uh, is like is is she is like fully trusted that Jesus is gonna uh, rise after the death like the disciples uh, I don't understand the first question okay هل هي كانت واسقة لربنا كان هي هي أم من الموت ويصعد للسماء عكس التلاميذ ما هم كانوا اللي هم مش كانوا واثقين اللي هو سيدنا. اه اه. Was she trusted? Yes. Yes. Saint Mary believed in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ even before he rose from the dead. You know, when the Lord actually spoke several times about his crucifixion and his resurrection, she, she believed. That's why the Coptic tradition disagrees that Saint Mary was one of the women who went to the tomb uh, because she was confident that he rose from the dead. Uh, that's first question. Second question, uh, after the ascension, she lived with John and actually, if you visited Turkey and visited the ruins of Ephesus, there is, a, you know, St. John, uh, he was uh, like the, the Bishop of Asia Minor. So there is a house there called the House of St. Mary. And uh, they say that John lived with St. Mary in this house, or St. Mary lived in this house when actually uh, uh, he took her with him to uh, Ephesus. Uh, we don't have this in our tradition, but we are not against it. We don't have it, but we are not against it. But uh, in Coptic tradition, she lived in Jerusalem, and she also died in Jerusalem. So she lived. Uh, as a spiritual mother to all the apostles and the disciples, as a spiritual mother to them. Any more questions? Okay, um, why do we fast the 15 days for St. Mary? Why don't we? You know, there are many, uh, many theories about the origin of this fast. There are many theories about the origin of this fast. Uh, one theory that this was fast for the virgins, and later on it was dedicated to St. Mary. But our Coptic tradition says that you know Saint Mary departed in uh, Tuba 21st, which comes in January. And uh, after this, her body was taken to the paradise. And Thomas was in India at that time. He was not in Jerusalem. So he saw her body carried by the angels. When he arrived to Jerusalem, he asked about St. Mary, and they told her, told him she died. So she asked to go and visit the tomb, they opened the tomb, they, they did not find her body. So Thomas told the disciples about the vision that he saw in India. Uh, so they decided to fast for 15 days, that God may reveal to them the same vision. 
And after the fasted 15 days, so uh, the same vision was revealed to them. This is what we have in, in the Coptic tradition. But as I told you, there are many other yani, theories uh, about the origin of this fast. Regardless why we fast, this fast actually is one of the most yani, favorite fast for all the Copts. Some people, they fast is three weeks. Some people, they fast the whole month of August. Some people, they fast uh, and eat uncooked food. Many people actually fast without fish, although fish is allowed in this fast. So people uh, honor and, and love Saint Mary, Mother of God, as she said, all generation will call me blessed. Um, and some non-Christian, I personally know some non-Christian Muslims, they keep the fast of Saint Mary. <coughs> Any more questions? <coughs> Actually, uh, <coughs> uh, last week somebody sent me a beautiful song uh, for Saint Mary. It was written uh, by uh, and written and chanted by uh, a Muslim lady. A very very beautiful song which yeah, just tell you how uh, even the non-Christian loves and Mary, uh, the mother of God. Okay, I think that's enough for tonight. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Onion and arm into no worship, all in go and much your open choice. Is more more of a fiaro, more a big nine and sick here in your own subtum big low, so the mono one nine on. I get she is hurry, some way see met all women to milk. Dexy met her law and tea, a cook in no gain a hint to. Sala be cut in soft and dead a veil, tis so fea and tis so low, mon be abnem mamparacleet on fi et a fi agent, ni apostolo se choice of it, ep on chamem ep taho erat pim ben yot et tayot and archerefs babavata, nem ben yot and episcopus ava. Yusuf, if not in te et fev, ta gro u hi jenu, no sin han mi shin rompi nem han se yu en hiri ni kon en te fev, en nu gaji tiru sa pesit en nu et shalam gen kolim tobhe be Christo se reye, tef kan en no vi na ne volchen u hiri ni kta bef nishtin, kiriya leison, kiriya leison. Kiriya logison amin es mo ero es mo istima tanya koni ev kombi es mo amin es okay please grant us your peace establish for us your peace forgive us our sins for yours is the power glory blessing and mercy forever amen O Lord make us worthy to pray thankfully our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. 